so many good horses over the years, and so many of those horses have carried the colours of Prince Khalid Abdullah. And I'm delighted to say uh, the Prince's racing manager, Teddy Grimthorpe, joins us on the line. Good morning, Teddy. Good morning, Martin. And I guess a, a huge loss um, personally and for racing, but I think we have to remember as well that there's a huge life and a huge contribution here that we, that we need to be celebrating. I, I think undoubtedly it, it, it is a, it's a huge loss and he, he will leave a almost irreplaceable gap um, in, in our lives, both, both personally and professionally. Uh, but that having been said, he lived a life. I mean, I don't think anyone would uh, ever grudge him that. I mean, he had an incredible life and, and there's a lot to celebrate. And many people have stories and reflections of Sir Henry. But what was it for you, Teddy, that made him stand out as a great? I think, I think that he, a lot has been talked about his affinity with horses and um, uh, and the, the respect that he showed them, and they in return showed showed him. Um, he he really he had a tremendous grasp of them. And that is to say, he was able to form in his mind what he wanted to do with them and where he wanted to be with them very, very clearly. And therefore, he was able to communicate that not only to the horses, but also to his jockeys and, and, and his staff. Um, and so the whole atmosphere of, of Warren Place was one of... Uh, 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 it was a very sort of happy aura all throughout. Uh, and I think that was was part of the trick. I don't think it was all of the trick, but I, I think it was certainly a, a good deal of it. And his record, as you, as you touched on, with, with Phillies was exceptional. And would it be maybe his patient approach that helped to, to bring that along? Uh, yes, I, I think. I mean, he had great charm and, and, and charisma, whatever. Uh, and I think a lot is made of, uh, uh, of the Phillies. Uh, and certainly he had a great touch with the likes of sort of Indian Skimmer, oh, so sharp, uh, midday, uh, go, the list is, is, is endless. But uh, you have to remember, he also had a fantastic record in, in, in the Derby and the Guineas uh, and, and the Colts. Uh, he started off with sort of Wallow, Bolkonski, all Ardras, Buckskin, the Moss, all those great, great stayers and, uh, and early, his early pilots. These were all cults as well, so I, I don't think it was. I, I think it was his overall package was was, was pretty spectacular. And of course, the, the greatest cult he, he arguably trained was was Frankel, and, and a lovely symmetry to come through there from from Bobby Frankel, the horse to be named after Bobby, and and what a remarkable legacy he leaves for Sir Henry. Yes, I, I think the uh, I think I always said that sort of Frankel was a sort of alignment of the stars, and of course Henry was one of those stars. Um, and of course we, we had uh, Prince Carlin had a very close relationship with Bobby Frankel, uh, and he was responsible for uh, really nearly twenty years uh, of, of training some some of our our, our best horses in the state, uh, and for that. Tribute. I, I always sort of said it was no coincidence that the Prince Carlin's prize yearly, which was Frankel, uh, was named in honour of one great conditioner um, and trained by another great one. And it, it, it was it was an extraordinary coming together uh, of, of, of talent. Frankel really. Frank deserved the trainer he got, and, and, uh, uh, and the trainer deserved Frank. So it was a, a, a wonderful uh, mesh. And Henry was always very adamant that the horse, in terms of Frankel, would tell him where to go next. And there was all sorts of morons in the media, myself probably included, banging on about him going a mile and a half and doing this and that. But he had very much his own plan. And in the end, it was a plan executed to perfection to remain unbeaten in 14 starts. Yeah, I think that I, I think the the real sort of important part again, as I Henry had a very clear idea of what he wanted to do and where he where he wanted to be, and I think uh, to bring Frankel to the races fourteen times 
and produce the sort of performance he did, it, it, it was a, it, it, it was part of, it was all part of his plan, and he wouldn't have got that <laughs> if you'd been running from. I don't know. We got tremendous advice to go from five furlongs to, to two miles, really. Um, uh, and and I, you certainly wouldn't have had the the finished article that you saw in, in his, in his four year old career, and, the, um, and especially at Ascot, and then at York, and then of course again at Ascot. You you wouldn't have had those the quality of those performances if you'd been running around various other distances. I'm not saying I always thought that Frankel had no limits at the end. I think he could he would have been effective from five furlongs to a mile and a half. Uh, and I, I I think in the end um, Frankel took on the best horses he could possibly have taken on uh, in his career anyway. So I, I don't think he really I don't think he lost out on, on, on that. But of course everyone had their opinions about what they should should do. But Henry's Henry's uh, astuteness and, and, and knowledge of, of uh, the capabilities uh, were, were able to uh, focus and, and, and pinpoint where he wanted to be to produce the sort of uh, performance that uh, everyone was really begging for. And it was a tremendous gesture by the Prince to keep the horse in training as a four-year-old. and. I think Prince Khalid's patronage and his association with the Cecil stable really has been instrumental in the way that Sir Henry's built the stable back up again in the last six, seven, eight, nine years. Well, Prince Khalid uh, uh, were, were, were very, very close friends. Uh, and so it, it wasn't a question of... Uh, uh, I, I think it was a, in terms of what... What Chris Scarlett thinking was, at least what he said to me, is that uh, once a genius, always a genius. Um, he doesn't, didn't suddenly not become unable to train. There were various, um, there was various dark things and uh, demons in his life, no question. Uh, but uh, I, I think Chris Scarlett always had a, a, belief, a great belief in Henry, and the beauty of it was that Henry always had a great belief. He he believed right up until his, the very his last last moment, uh, really, and, uh, and and so that that and that was something that he also transmitted to both his horses and and his staff, which is part again part of his his successful makeup. Well, Teddy, a very sad loss to, to racing, but so many wonderful memories to, to look back on and enjoy. Many thanks for sharing a few of those with us this morning. Not at all.